Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden and today we're in the backyard and we're having a little bit of a reprieve in that it's only 90 degrees outside. Now the humidity is making it feel closer to 100 but still. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing out one of the beds in front of me, cleaning it out on some of the plants that have died, replanting new marigolds in there and then we're also going to be harvesting some flowers throughout the garden including these gorgeous pro-cut sunflowers. Okay, so my pro cuts are doing really well. These are the plum pro cuts. They're absolutely gorgeous. And so we're gonna be harvesting some of those today. These are the gold lights, which are my favorite sunflowers. And so I'll be harvesting some of that today, but let me show you the flower bed we're gonna be working in. So we're actually gonna be working in this flower bed today. It had a number of things going on in it. Um, it has a lot of snapdragons that I'm gonna be cutting all the way back. It has some volunteer celosia going on in here. It has some volunteer basil going on in here. Over on this side, I had a couple of plants of scabiosas that have since been cut back dramatically. Um, they were getting those fuzzy caterpillars really bad. And then this area right here is where I was growing sweet rocket. And sweet rocket is a biennial, so I grew it for two years for it to finally bloom. And then when it finally did get close to blooming, it, um, Basically, it got really bad aphids and it sucked, it sucked big time. So um, at this point, let me see if there's any blooms on here. I mean, there's a few, but I'm going to pull it up at this point. I'm over it and I want to replace it with some fresh marigold. So let's start by getting this cleaned out. Now, you're probably going to notice this bed in front of me. It is... Um, basically a bed that I've just let go. I haven't done anything with it in a couple of years because it's the plan has always been to move it and then I just haven't gotten around to it. So yes, it's filled with grass and it's in terrible shape. But at this point, I just ignore it. <laughs> so regarding this um, sweet rocket, I'm going to start, it looks like it's trying to produce more plants. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming up from the ground from this. So what I think I might do is just cut these to the ground for the time being and go ahead and put something else in here so that I can just get something else going in all honesty. These have, I felt really annoyed because these have like almost just been a total waste for me. And, and if cutting them back all the way kills them, I, I'm not stressed about it. It's fine. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep the celosia, but I am going to top it. So basically, I'm just following the celosia down and I'm cutting it above a set of two leaves to produce more growth. Then in addition, I'm gonna locate the snapdragons and I'm gonna take them all the way back to the ground and give them just a nice cleanup and a reprieve from the sun. I'm leaving about two inches of um, the plant above the ground. These may or may not die, but I wasn't really concerned because this isn't really an area that I'm wanting to keep snapdragons in. Um, but I'll kind of just go with the flow on it. I feel like at this time of year, I just get really brutal <laughs> with my plants. Okay, and then like I said before, I'm just topping some of these celosia to make it more branching, just like that. And then this basil over here, I'm just gonna go in and take out some of the flowers. Okay, so cleared out. A couple of things we have going on here. There's some major soil drop over here. So this has gone down significantly, I have some over here. So even though I've got existing plants in here, I am going to toss in a couple of bags of soil um, just so that I have a better foundation because this soil is really thin and when it's thin like that, a ton of grass will come through like that. So I think we're going to go ahead and pull up the brown tubing, lay down more soil, and then I'll put the brown tubing back in.
Okay, and the soil I'm using is called BM7. And this is a soil, potting soil. It's good for raised beds too that I get from Homegrown in Farmersville. And I know y'all are going to be concerned about all these snapdragons I'm covering up. But either they'll go through, grow through the soil, or they won't. I'm okay either, either way. Ooh, that looks like a million times better. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is come back through with my drip lines. And um, yeah, you can totally sink your drip lines down lower if you want. I mix it up. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It usually just depends on how easy it is for me to track what um, what's going on with the drip line. So sometimes if I plant seeds, I want to see the drip lines so that I know exactly where to plant, you know, right next to an emitter, emitter and then I know exactly that that seed is getting water. So it really kind of just depends. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, let's talk about the varieties going in here. This first variety going in is Giant Mission Yellow Marigold. And I started these from seed inside. They're still trying to start these in our zone. So these are actually pretty easy to find these seeds at your local um, like Home Depot or Lowe's or something. So you can start these. These are nice, tall, beautiful yellow blooms, very hardy and um, definitely still time to start. You could start them inside by seeds like what I've done or you could go ahead and direct sow outside. I like the control factor of starting inside. But these will be really nice. Okay, we've got those in. The next variety I'm gonna be doing is, this is more giant mission yellow. I did not mean to have all those. Okay, the next variety is gonna be orange Hawaii. And I planted multiple seedlings in one container. So I'm actually gonna open this up separate it out into two seedlings. Same situation again. This orange Hawaii is a big giant bloom. I'm really excited to see how it does. Now the orange Hawaii, I believe I purchased this one from either Baker Creek or Johnny's. So you can order those still online if you're interested. Okay, the next variety I have is Sugar and Spice. And this one's kind of like a buttery color. And it did not do as well during the germination process as some of the others did. So I don't have as many seedlings of that. And of course I gave a bunch to my friend Kristen for her garden. Okay, the next variety, and it looks like this one's broken, is Kilimanjaro. A white. And this is more of a truer bloom, but it has kind of like a yellow center, I believe. Ooh. Okay, and then for the last one, I actually have a few more of the Giant Mission Yellow. I didn't realize I had an extra one of these. But we'll have yellow flanking both sides. All right. 
sweet. Now, ideally, you're going to plant your seedlings at the coolest part of the day. I'm just kind of at a point where this is my coolest part of the day. Um, the next few weeks are going to be really, really hot. So I'm going to get these in. I'm going to water them. They are going to wilt um, today, but they'll perk back up, and I'll be checking on them every day to make sure they're well watered and that they're not overcome by the sun. If worse comes to worse, I can always put some shade cloth over them to help them out a little bit. All right, and when watering in your seedlings, you're not going to water from above where you kind of like pound them down. You want to water low at the base of each of the plants. Just like this. I'm not trying to like flood them out because their roots aren't really attached to the soil there yet. So I don't want to water it so much that it displaces the soil that's currently holding it in place. Okay, and then one more thing, I'm not gonna do it today, but I'm probably gonna come through and top these um, marigolds just to make them a little bit more bushy. Um, but I'm not gonna do that today. They've been through a lot of stress already. So let's go ahead and look at harvesting some flowers. Okay, so a while back, um, I guess maybe two months ago, I planted a bunch of these sunflowers from seed. And they are pro cut, so they're not branching, so they're only gonna have one bloom on them. And basically, I'm gonna keep this bed going for a while. So, as soon as I cut, I'm actually gonna immediately place with more sunflower seeds in each of the locations. So, when I cut, I'm actually coming all the way down here to the bottom and cutting that all the way at the base. And so look at the size of that sunflower. Isn't that glorious? And so, what I'm gonna do is strip off the leaves. And I don't need the big giant stem, but I love the big giant bloom. That looks fabulous. And just put it down here into a bucket of water. And these tend to not have much pollen, if any. Um, that's why these are pro cuts are preferred by um, preferred by florists. And as I'm cutting these back, it'll make more room for the smaller stems coming up to have a little more room too um, for more growth. Now, I'm not really sure what this variety is right here because it has, if you look, it has little buds in front of the leaves, so that means it's branching. So I've heard sometimes that can happen with the um, Pro Cuts is it can revert back to its original form, so I guess that particular seed did. And then it looks like I have one of the Gold Light, which are hands down my favorite sunflower. I love their size. I love how happy they are with that beautiful golden center. I just think it's got a little bug hanging out there. I just think they're absolutely beautiful. This one's not quite open. I'll go ahead and take that one right there. And this opens up the center quite a bit for some smaller sunflowers that are coming in underneath. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. So I also have some basil in here and some of this basil just needs a quick trim back. Let me do that. And that'll get it producing again. And then I've got some of this beautiful cardinal basil um, that's been coming up. So I'm gonna harvest a few stems of that. Kind of has like a beautiful like purple fluff. Look how pretty that basil is. Cardinal basil. And it gets much bigger. I'm harvesting early. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I have a good amount of zinnias over here. 
and these are volunteers. Um, I had plants in here last year, and I'm not sure with the variety there. I think maybe Pink Ench Enchantress. Pink Enchantress. Okay, over here I have some status, and this status is called Forever Silver. And it's kind of like a white, but it has kind of like a lavender kind of gray tone to it. And if you keep harvesting status, it will keep producing blooms. You definitely don't want to let the blooms like die on the plant. Trust me, I've done it. And the plant stops producing. And over here, I'm going to be harvesting some meteor showers, Rubina. I'm really looking for blooms that are falling into um, the path of my mowers. I'm running out of energy. <laughs> Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to harvest today is a couple of limelight hydrangeas. I've had a lot of rain lately. So these are heavy, weighted down. I'm starting to get the copper stuff that I typically get every year in my hydrangeas. Um, I'm not really sure what it is. I've tried treating. It hasn't really worked. I tried treating earlier. It hasn't really worked. So it kind of is what it is. And so I just enjoy my hydrangeas while I can. Then the stuff gets after them. And um, it will kill all the leaves. All the leaves will fall off. And then um, after that, everything comes back. I just try to stop stressing about it. Just let it happen because I know the plant comes back every year. So, very pretty blooms. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, I just, I got worn out the other day. <laughs> it was a lot. And so now I'm inside. I'm going to do a flower arrangement. I don't do a lot of flower arrangements on YouTube anymore. Most of them are on my social media. Um, outlets and the reason I don't do very much is because I don't get a lot of positive feedback from the flower arrangements. <laughs> so I'm going to put this one together fairly quickly for you all um, and I hope you guys enjoy the process. I am using an antique salt glaze pitcher that I found at some thrift store at some point I'm sure. Actually I think this one was I purchased it from a, a vintage market but let's get going. I love how it turned out. Very fun and funky. I like the um, drumstick alliums kind of sticking out. This is fun, one school, and this will be beautiful on my kitchen table. And then my sunflowers, I think what I'm going to do with my sunflowers, um, my mom and dad are six, and my mom loves sunflowers. So I think I'm just going to bundle these up, take them all over to her, let her enjoy them in her house. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up. And make sure you check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. If you are looking 
for my flower arranging videos, that's where they are. They are on my social media outlets. Um, I don't put them on YouTube as often anymore, but today I was feeling it and I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to arrange all of these. I'm really happy with them. All right, y'all, as always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.